Livewire S2 Mulholland is a bike that might invite skepticism. It's compact, relatively pricey, and deviates from traditional motorcycle design by embracing its lightweight, urban electric nature. Yet, it's also fast, fun, and easy to ride, boasting well-tuned, high-end components. This new electric machine requires some getting used to. There's a correct and incorrect way to operate it. But when used properly, it offers an unmatched level of riding enjoyment and convenience. No lithium-ion-powered motorcycle on the market today is free from challenges related to cost, weight, and charging times. Electric motorcycle manufacturers face similar hurdles, with no single OEM having a secret advantage. The main differences among electric bikes lie in their style, intended use, and how manufacturers balance MSRP with the costs of fast charging capabilities and battery quality. All EVs encounter the same issues with charging infrastructure, but motorcycles are unique in that riders don't have a temperature-controlled cabin to wait in while the vehicle charges, they must find a nearby business or wait in a random parking lot. The Mulholland features a 10.5 kWh battery with level 2 fast charging, which takes a claimed 78 minutes to charge from 20% to 80%, and 142 minutes to charge from 0% to 100%. Our testing found these claims accurate, but we also avoided out-of-home charging whenever possible, electric cruiser, or something else. The Mulholland is Livewire's second bike built on its S2 platform, following the flat-track-inspired Delmarch. The main difference in the S2 models is the Mulholland's lower subframe and dropped seat height. Livewire dubs this bike an electric sport cruiser, though the term cruiser seems to be used mainly because of the lower seat. There's no need to debate what constitutes a cruiser or if current technology allows for an electric cruiser. At first glance, the Mulholland might appear somewhat mismatched, like someone added a cruiser tail section to a street tracker, which is essentially what happened. However, once you get on the bike, the response is clear. Its ergonomics are comfortable and well-suited for riders of various sizes. The mid-control footpegs are placed exactly where you'd expect. The tall forks and 6-inch risers, paired with short-rise handlebars, create a comfortable yet sporty stance with direct steering feedback while riding. The Mulholland has a low center of gravity, manages its 432 pounds well, is easy to lift off the kickstand, and can be moved around in the garage without much effort. Low speed handling, below 5 miles per hour, can be a bit unstable, but anything over 8 miles per hour is rock steady, nimble, and, combined with a well-tuned throttle, provides excellent control. Flip the kill switch down to run, and the Mulholland turns on, but it takes 9 seconds for the screen to boot up before you can ride away. This first moment of interaction is the first barrier between man and machine. You can't just get on and start it and go. You have to wait until the screen tells you the bike is on. More than a few times my buddies on gas-powered bikes were halfway down the block by the time I was able to pull out of my curbside parking spot. On the road and highway, there is a difference. But once moving, the Mulholland is simple and natural. It really is as easy as twist and go. Rain, road, sport, and range modes are available. Tuning regenerative charging, power, throttle input, ABS, and traction control in the manner expected from each mode's name. Sport is fast, rain is slow, while range limits power and increases regen. Two rider programmable modes are available for customization. Pre-programmed modes make sense and serve their intended purpose well. I typically left the house in road mode and, depending on remaining battery level when I aimed the bike toward home, would switch into sport or economy. Electric motorcycles don't like sustained highway speeds, and the Mulholland is no different. Livewire claims a range of 73 miles at a sustained speed of 55 miles per hour, but Los Angeles highways flow around 75 miles per hour, where riders can watch percentage points drop rapidly. The battery percentage points reflected on the 4-inch color TFT screen are also highly inconsistent and don't work for trying to plan or estimate range. That really comes from experience and knowing how you're using the bike. On one occasion I rode the bike 6 miles through city streets from my home in Altadena to a restaurant in downtown Pasadena and arrived with a 100% battery level. After completing the 6-mile ride home on the same route, in the same ride mode at a similar pace, given it was uphill to home, I was down to 92. Estimated range doesn't do much more for you. You could be riding along with 100 miles of range and then hit a steep uphill and see that number drop dramatically, vice versa on the downhill. 
accurately gauging range and battery life requires experience on this particular machine. On a Sunday morning joyride, I was able to get the Mulholland under 20% battery in less than 30 miles. Los Angeles' premier motorcycle road, Angeles Crest Highway, begins 4.8 miles from my door, and 4 miles of that is highway. So throw it into sport mode, ride 4 miles on the highway, 10 miles up Angeles Crest, and it's time to turn around because you're now under 60%. Percentage seems to drop more quickly as the level goes lower. Is it that just a trick range anxiety plays on you? Maybe. It's difficult to consistently test without a charge at the turnaround. You'd like to stay in sport mode for the descent, so turning around while you still have some juice to spare is the play. Here in the hills, pushing the Mulholland to its limits and asking the most from it, it shines. 0 to 60 miles per hour is achieved in a claimed 3.3 seconds with the electric motors claimed 194 pound FT of torque. A Brembo monoblock four-piston caliper provides excellent stopping power and incredible brake feel at the lever, allowing a high level of control. Ergonomics are comfortable and relaxed but upright enough to put some weight on the foot pegs, move your body, and maximize lean angle. The 43mm inverted fork is fully adjustable and a progressively linked monoshock is preload and rebound adjustable, which gives the Mulholland a plush but stable feel on the highway, staying composed while pushed hard through the turns. The realities of electric motorcycles. It's ironic reading the copy. Riding is more than moving from point A to point B. It's the thrill of exploration and discovery, moments only experienced on an electric motorcycle on the Mulholland's website because this bike is best used moving only from point A to point B and avoiding exploration and discovery altogether. Exploration requires range and the freedom to roam. In my month with the Mulholland, I ran lots of fun, quick errands, I commuted a few times, but never did I go out to explore roads I didn't know. It's virtually impossible to move through LA without spending time on highways, so any ride over 60 miles would have me planning a charging spot beforehand, specifically trying to avoid a grocery store parking lot. And most of all, I still own gas bikes. To explore and discover, you need to be able to take that next turn, to keep going. To actually reach the lake at the top of the hill without staring nervously at battery percentage the whole time, as it ticks down to a forced departure from the ride. Range anxiety makes it hard to find peace, it can be slight, but it's a constant tax on your mind that keeps the rider from being able to fully relax, engage, and reach that flow state that we all strive for. Throw away your IC expectations. If you only compare the Livewire Mulholland to other electric motorcycles, it's wonderful. It's comfortable, compact, and easy to ride around town, while versatile enough for expert riders to have some fun and excitement in the hills.